my crafters Raquel here with paints and glitter and today I'm coming along with the timeless tea jar die set from tonic studios I'm gonna pan it because it's kind of large here and I am going to be creating one version of this tea jar with you today and let me tell you this is an impressive set and it's very unassuming I think in the pictures but when you open this the first thing that I'm gonna let you know is that the sets do come with instructions it lets you know how you can assemble the base piece but then your imagination can run wild when you see all of the different potentials of combinations that you have available to you and i was doing a little bit of math here because i just i, I like the topic i wanted to see how many different ways could you mix and match what's available here and i was so blown away First of all, because you do have two separate types of jars that you can make, but it is that intricate panel that's also included in the set that really makes this an outstanding type of 3D project that's not like others that you see on the market. So you get a big bang for your buck with this set. And let me tell you why. I was looking at this this particular shape is what I'm going to be creating today and it's almost like a little I, I see a little hot air balloon here and I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's already been made with just the side panels but you get here two different designs that you can inlay onto the sides of your box and that's what's going to start creating the decorative uh, decorative effect of your box of course but if you note here there are some little frames and this one is wavy hopefully you can see that little detail and then this one over here is just solid okay so just your basic shape there however you can group that with the outer frame and you have this one here that has this really intricate pattern it's absolutely stunning and then you have another outer panel here and this has more of a scalloped look to it and in between there are these little tiny flowers they remind me of little tulips and it's a little bit hard to see in this camera but i guarantee you they're there so that alone gives you four options in which you can mix and match just the outer panels and then there's also this interior panel here and of course i've got mine on this nice magnet and you can get these from tonic so that you can house all of your dies but this one here has little daisies. It happens to be one of my favorite flowers. So of course I started off with that one and you'll see in a minute what that looks like. But that daisy panel does not cut the edges. So that's called a verso die. So if you want to, you can use that to cut into the background, which is the base of your box and then put a little tea light in there and create a little lamp out of it. Just absolutely adorable. If not, you can couple it with that little wavy uh edge that i just mentioned a minute ago and then that's going to give you one combination if you want to you can combine it with this edge here that has the tulips that i mentioned and that really beautiful scallop that's another combination if not you can instead of using that border use those daisies with this one here and vice versa this panel by the way instead of daisies the design is a gorgeous leaf pattern and holding it like this maybe can allow you to see, but all of that's gonna cut out of your paper. Again, it's a verso die, so the edge does not cut out. But I counted just with this one here that there are at least eight options of panels for the side, and then there are eight corner options because this does have a cute little corner uh, aspect to it. And then also, there are two edges available for that. So there's a smooth edge and then there's the wavy edge. The same down here, a little wavy edge and then the smooth edge. And then these can be replaced with one triangle or make, mix and match whatever you like. And then that's just one base jar. The same is going to happen over here. This jar is going to be a different shape. Same kind of situation where you have different triangles you can use. You can mix and match them or you have four options just beginning there. But then there are these two over here that can fit in there. So you have another two. That's a total of six. And then you have a panel here in the center that you can use. It has daisies on it. It also has this gorgeous kind of filigree um, or I should say uh, almost like a little trellis here. 
and it does have four tiny little hearts on each little side there absolutely adorable and then over here there's this pattern again which is the one with a bunch of little kind of almost uh i i think of little baguettes when i see that uh and i mean like the the cut of a diamond the baguette style that's what that reminds me of and then there's also that leaf pattern repeated here there are stripes if you like that there are uh, the different little tulips again and then there is what you would use also for the lid and that's this piece here I'm going to be showing you that in a moment but this third option you can definitely of course use it also for the side panels of this octagonal box over here then there's the lid so the lid is this piece cut twice and I'll share with you what that's going to look like of course but you'll be cutting this out twice and on the lid instead of leaving it solid they've provided also some more little pieces that you can cut out and layer on top, decorate it, make it beautiful, go to town, and before you give it away, you can make a little tag. <laughs> so the little tag looks like this. I think it's so darling. I could just have fun with that, <laughs> let alone everything else. But then they've provided the sentiments. This one says, uh, let's see, this one here says for you. This one says love. That's the one I'll be using today. And by the way, those little sentiments also fit onto the lid and vice versa. So if you want to use the decorative portions on your tag, or if you want to use the sentiments on your lid, you can mix and match. And then right on the center of the lid, there's another little piece here that's four little hearts. Absolutely adorable. So let's get started. Now, today I'm only going to be making one version, but you can follow along if you would like to. Just pause the video, take your time. And by the way, I'll be using the Mirror cardstock in Petal Pink and my favorite pink cardstock from Tonic Studios, which is Ballet Pink. This is 80 pound. This one's 92 pound. You can cut it out and make all your intricate pieces with that. And I will share with you how I intend on using this. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is the base. I cut out two pieces of this largest die that you see here. And I did use the ballet pink for that. So you're gonna need two of those. Then I also cut out using that lid piece that I mentioned, two more pieces in ballet pink. And as you can tell, I already got started. So I had mentioned that you can decorate the sides of that little lid. And that's exactly what I did. I cut out using this solid piece here, which is gonna layer out of the mirror cardstock that piece that's right back here and as you can tell i started gluing it there because i cut into the cardstock using this other intricate piece here i'm going to share with you how that works so what you do is you've cut out your base piece and then you lay this one right on top you're going to use your low tack adhesive from tonic studios take a piece of this and adhere that right onto your paper, run it through your die cutting machine, and you're going to get this result here. It's almost like a little window. Now this is really delicate and it's gonna get handled. It is the lid of the box. So to help with that, what I did was that after I adhered the mirror cardstock on the back, I went ahead and cut a second little panel using both of those dies, this one and that one, and that gave me a separate piece to layer right on top. I'm going to now be placing that little mirror card right behind and I did want to show how very little glue you need for this. I'm using the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, placing that mirror card stock on the back, allowing that to grip and once that is adhered, I flip my card over, take the little layering panel and then I'm going to place that directly on top. I'm using tweezers to help me to construct this and I'll also be using the deluxe adhesive throughout as well as double sided tape on some pieces throughout. Now I wanted to share that there are these adorable little triangles that you can use to decorate this box. I had mentioned that previously. So I did cut out four of those for the lid portion. And I decided that to give myself a little bit of dimension on this, 
I would use the Craft Perfect Little Dimensional Adhesive Squares that you can grab from Tonic as well. And I'm going to be placing them on the little portion there where they fit. And after doing that, I'm going to go through and grab every single one of the score lines on this lid and I'm going to start folding those away from myself so they're all mountain folds and you'll be doing that twice of course because there's two pieces and I did have to reinforce one of the little panels there a little bit with the glue. Mare cardstock does need a little bit more just because of that sheen on top but then you're going to stagger those pieces as I shared there place your glue in the center square of that lid which you're then going to be able to decorate at the end it should look like that and now you're going to be gluing the sides so it's going to be the little tabs that are longer I'm going to share closer there how you can go about doing that and it helps if you have burnished all of your fold lines before you add your glue but at the end the center should look like that and now once those are glued go ahead and fold the little triangular tabs that you have on the bottom pieces there and you're going to gently start folding this paper also away from you apply your glue there and this is going to create the shape of that little domed lid to your box so as you see me there I'm pinching those little triangles to adhere them to the little rectangle right next to them and that's going to create that different angle so it's important that you do the larger sides first and then the shorter and here I just finished off the other two little triangle pieces and that's my finished lid that I then at the end add the little square to the top but I just wanted to share with you the difference in the angles there now moving on to the base of this box I took the panel that was the straight edge and the daisy and I cut several of these I took two of them glued them together and that's what I'm sharing here and I laid them right on top of one of the base panels that I'm going to use for the side of the box. I ran them through my die cutting machine with the embossing folder and that gave me a really beautiful dimensional piece now that is embossed and you can do this with all of your dies. For the second panel I did cut it out and again cut out the little panel with the daisies and I adhered that directly on top of the base and this is smooth white cardstock but I'm now gluing that little intricate piece that I cut out with the daisies and I'm coloring the center of those little flowers using a pink alcohol marker from Tonic and then with a lavender one I'm just lightly shading the petals of each one of those little daisies and this is going to give it a very, very delicate look and now I'm going in with an, an aquaflow pen that's just a glimmer pen it doesn't have color it just has shine and I'll be linking all of this below if you're interested and once I'm done with my coloring I'm going to grab yet another one of those panels that I cut out and this is going to allow me to have a nice clean finish without having worried about coloring in the lines so to speak and this is going to be the embossed panel on the left and then the colored panel on the right is how I'll be decorating this particular box it doesn't really matter it's just as long as you do the different panels and uh, one on the left and one on the right so I finished decorating these with the additional uh, decorative panels that are the little triangles. I did this twice of course and I decided that for the edge of that second one that I had colored I would use that larger piece that I used to cut the base as well as the little scalloped um, die that you can insert in the center 
and with that I cut out a piece of that gorgeous mirror cardstock and this is actually going to frame out that portion. I just wanted to make use of that gorgeous color and I did use double sided adhesive and then I also added the deluxe adhesive and that's what this ends up looking like. The shine is just spectacular on this card so I highly recommend it. Uh, now moving on to the construction of this particular piece you want to make sure that you follow every single score line all of the tabs and fold them away from you and I did use my bone folder by the way to reinforce those folds it may not show here in the video just for the sake of time but there you see it in my hand uh, I was very careful however not to push on that paper too hard so as to not damage the pretty mirror cardstock but now you're going to create one long panel by grabbing both of those bases and once those two panels are adhered together in the center you can now start gluing the angled tabs and for this you want to take your time and as you see I just start adding glue on those folded tabs and then matching one paper to the next and just being very conscious of the fact that they are in an angle there uh, it's about a 45 degree angle it's not a straight line so it's the reason why you want to take your time and just be careful with your paper so that you don't tear it and if you get a little bit too much glue just grab a little wipe and then you can uh, clean off those little edges especially if you're using white paper you're going to want to take your time so that you don't ruin all of the work you've done already but little by little you have all the angles glued together and now you get to see the top and bottom and I had forgotten to share that you will need of course a bottom to this box so I did use the smooth white card from Tonic Studios and cut it out using one of the little octagon dies included in the set and I then covered that up with that beautiful uh, ballet pink card and now I burnish that from the inside using my bone folder making sure that that made full contact and for the lip of this jar you're going to have four of these little pieces that you're also going to be folding because this is going to allow that lid to then be able to fit right on top of the jar so you can fold them as you see here and using the same piece that has the little scrolls that I had described in the beginning then you're going to cut out another little octagon shape that's going to go right on the tabs that are exposed here and again you want to make sure that you add plenty of glue here to secure this onto uh, the top of your jar and here you're also going to want to be patient when you're applying this so that you don't apply too much pressure on your paper however you want to make sure that those little corners are nicely adhered onto that paper so that you have a really nice sturdy jar with all of the sides looking the same and I did take my time here I know that I sped up the video for the sake of not taking up too much of your time but I do stress that this is the type of project that you don't want to rush so that you get a really nice finish so just focus on those little angles and the little corners and all that good stuff and then you're gonna have a really really beautiful piece in the end so you see me there pressing the little corners once that glue down now you can take the other little pieces and you have the option of placing one at a time if you'd like and if not you can do it the way that I've done which is that I've glued every single one of these little uh, tabs together first and I'm just joining one to the other you see that little folded tab that each piece has and it's only four of them so it, this goes quite quickly you just apply your glue and then join them together like a little ring and you're gonna have a piece that looks like this 
You can now fold the tabs again on the bottom, fold them away from you, so that's going to be a valley fold. Apply your glue on every single one, and then very gingerly now place this right on top, again matching the angles that are already there. And what I did was that I wanted to make sure that this went all the way to the edge, but without creating any gaps. So as you see there, I just placed one hand on the inside of this jar, and then with my fingernail, basically I'm pushing that paper all the way to the edge. And if you don't have long nails, of course, just use a small ruler. I recommend that you get a, a thin ruler, maybe uh, something that's not too bulky, and then you can push that paper all the way to the edge. And that's going to create the opening of this jar for you. And of course, you're going to now want to cover those seams. And what I did was that I cut that octagon again out of the mirror cardstock. And very gently, I placed this right on top. I had already placed double-sided adhesive onto this piece. And so I'm using my little pokey tool here to remove the backing. And little by little, I start pressing down to make sure that I don't ruin that beautiful embossing that's been created onto that paper. Now, if it bothers you to see two different colors, uh, for instance, a little bit of that wa white paper peeking out of the edge, then go ahead and cut that out of the pink cardstock instead. I just wanted to use uh, the paper that was a little bit thicker, and I think that's why I cut it out of the white, but I don't think it matters in this uh, instance how thick the paper is. In fact, if you use that 80 pound paper, it should be uh, sufficient because this isn't something that needs to be really thick, especially if you're doubling up with the decorative paper. So you see there, little by little, I took my time, I removed that double uh, sided adhesive backing and then pressed onto that. And that allowed me to have that beautiful decorative edge that's going to stand out against uh, the background here. But I just think it's so darling. And now the little lid fits perfectly. And I did decorate that very top portion. And I also cut out the tag that I had mentioned earlier. I used a glimmer pen to write into the embossing that says love. And I also used a piece of mirror cardstock behind it, a dimensional piece of adhesive, and a piece of twine for that little tag. And then I got out my seam binding here uh, in ivory and in pink. And I did apply a little bit of double-sided tape to the edges of that little lid. So that way I could apply that beautiful ribbon all the way around. And I still wanted it to be crinkly, so I didn't put tape on every single uh, piece there. But you see how I'm just laying that right on top of the, uh, the border. And then I created my little bow. And this was slipping, so I just added another little piece of tape here. There you get to see more clearly how I went about that. And then I pressed my seam binding toward the tape. I created my little bow, and this is how I went about decorating this jar. Just very gently making a little, uh, just single loop bow there, but then I did top it off with another piece of that pink seam binding. And then on top of the center of that bow is where I adhered the little tag. So here's the completed jar. I think it's absolutely fabulous. I'm going to have a little play, of course, with some Nouveau drops or pearls. I'm going to continue on, but I didn't want to make this video too long. But I hope that you have enjoyed this process and that you leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. But don't forget that you can definitely get this bundle right now together with the safety deposit box. 
and I'll be linking that below. So if you are interested, this is a wonderful little jar that's going to fit uh, little goodies up to, let's see here, I would say four inches tall uh, without including that little dome lid, but I think it's spectacular and I hope that you have enjoyed it as well. And as I always say, I hope that you can be inspired and be blessed. And I thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.